Hi, and welcome to episode five of Understanding Dark Table. A little bit of housekeeping before we move on to looking at tags. In episode two, I was talking about the keyboard shortcuts, Alt-1, Alt-2, Alt-3, and Alt-4, for zooming in and out of the light table grid view. What I didn't mention, and someone raised this through the email list uh, of Darktable user email list, was that you can use the keyboard control key and your mouse wheel. So if I wanted to zoom in on, let's say, this particular image here, this square one, I could hold down the control key and mouse wheel away from me to zoom in until we get to a single image view. Likewise, you can then hold the control key, roll the mouse wheel back towards you to zoom out. So that's another option. Also, if you want a single image preview, I don't think I mentioned this in episode two, you can press the Z key and that will give you just a single image preview of whatever image you currently have selected in the grid view. Now, you'll notice that the side panels have disappeared, so you can't actually do any editing at all. It's really just show me a full screen image of this one particular image that I've selected. But that will only work as long as you hold the Z key down. The moment you release the Z key, you switch back to grid view. Now you can add the shift modifier to make it sticky. So look mum, no hands. That will hold that view for as long as you like until you press the Z key again and then again you return back into the grid view. So that's just a nice little tip for a single image preview. You can also use the control modifier with the Z key and that will give you a single image preview with these little red boxes that show you where Darktable believes focus is sharp within the image. So if you're checking particularly portraits, you want to make sure that you've got the eyes sharp, uh, this can be a good way to check that if you're in doubt. Like Adobe Lightroom, you can use the tab key to show and hide the side panels. So anyone who's familiar with Lightroom is probably already familiar with that concept, so just know that it translates to Darktable as well, which is great. If you want to rate your images, the keys above your QWERTY keys, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, will allow you to assign that many stars to an image. So this image currently has no stars assigned, so I can hit 2, and that has assigned two stars to that image. If I want to make it five, hit the five key, it's now rated five. If I want it to be zero, I can press the zero key, and now there are no stars assigned to that image at all. You can use the R key to mark an image as a reject. So if you know you are definitely never going to use this image because for whatever reason, you know, focus was out or you've composed it badly or you took a photo of somebody and they weren't expecting it like my son Max sitting at his computer I can just hit the R key and that then becomes a reject. Now if I decide at some point oh no I didn't actually want to reject that image I can press any of the number keys from 0 to 5 to rate it either as 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 or 5 stars and it will no longer be marked as a reject. So I can press the zero key and there it is applied. No stars, but it's no longer marked as a reject. Now, similar to the zero, one, two, three, four, five keyboard shortcuts to assign star ratings, you can use the function keys F1 through F5 to assign color labels as well. And it's F1 for red, F2 for yellow, F3 for green, F4 for blue and F5 for purple. So if I wanted to mark this blue, I would simply click F4 and that has now got a little blue dot. I don't know if you can see that, I'll zoom in a bit. There we go, that little blue dot there. We could go F1 for red, F4 to take blue off, F1 to take red off, F2 for yellow, etc., etc. So that's applying color labels in the light table view. 
Couple of things in the collect images module that I didn't mention in that episode. One is the use of the wildcard parameter, which is the percent symbol. So shift five on your keyboard. This is an interesting one. And again, I'm wondering if this isn't a bug. So type in Yasa and I've now got Mount Yasser, which is an active volcano in Vanuatu. I was there in 2006. Now, you would think that by double clicking on Mount Yasser, I would see all of the images that I have tagged with Yasser. So I double click and we can see that I've got nine images wide by four rows. I've got 36 images that I've tagged with Mount Yasser. However, this collection of nine images here, and that last one on the first row, is a multi-image pano that I was going to stitch later on. And I've done that, but I'm not seeing the stitched panorama in this collection of results. And I actually emailed the mailing list to say, is this a bug? And someone wrote back to me and said, you need to add the wildcard after the word Yasa. So shift five to put the percentage sign up there and press enter. And what do you know? Here at the end of the first row is my multi-image pano. And I can press the Z key and there's my full image preview of that image. Now, if I look at the tagging module, we can see that I've got Vanuatu, Tana, Mount Yasa, Volcano in the tags. So why did this image not appear without the wildcard? Why did it need the wildcard for that image to be included? This seems like a bug to me, but be aware that if you don't find images that you thought should have shown up, with a keyword or whatever other form of metadata you might be using as a search criteria, try adding the wildcard to the end of it because as you've just seen, it defies logic, but sometimes images don't come up in the results when they should. Uh, and the wildcard just seems to make that little bit of difference. I can't really explain why it does that, but anyway, there you go. All right, so now let's take a look at tagging and what we can do with our tags. Now, you may recall in episode one, I talked about how you can export images from Lightroom with all of their metadata and keywords and tags and all that sort of stuff written to XMP sidecar files. And I mentioned in that first video that Lightroom will export those files using the file name .xmp as the name of the sidecar file. I have found an image which I've copied to my test shots folder. And it's this image here, dsc1860.arw. ARW.XMP is the version of the sidecar file that Darktable has generated. The original Lightroom version is this version which doesn't include the extension as part of the file name. And you can see I've got an edited metadata text file here which we'll get to in a minute. What I'm going to do is delete the Darktable version of the sidecar file. There's a reason for that you'll see in a minute. Before we do that, let's have a look at the metadata that came from Lightroom. Let's display this file. And what we're looking at here is a whole bunch of XML markup code. And if we scroll down far enough, we will eventually come to Some keywords. Here we go. So there's this tag RDF colon bag and then there are line items. Bruce 21 because it was a photo taken on my 21st birthday. 
Bruce Williams, that's me. Ron Williams, that was my grandfather. Tweed Heads, that was the location. Birthday, because that's what it was. And people. Now, interestingly, if we then scroll further down, we will find right down at the bottom another RDF bag set of tags where there are nested versions of those keywords. Australia, New South Wales, Tweed Heads, Events, Birthday, Bruce 21, People, Bruce Williams, and People, Ron Williams. So I'm not sure why Lightroom chose to write the metadata like that in two separate chunks, particularly given that it used the same XML tag as a header for that section, but that's what it did. And it's because of that that I created this text file, edited metadata.txt, so we could just see those two sets of tags as they appeared in that original Lightroom exported metadata sidecar file. So now that we've seen that metadata as it was exported from Lightroom, we can import the image now into Darktable and see how Darktable interprets it. So here's this single image of me at my 21st birthday. Uh, as you can tell, this is me having taken a photo of a photographic print lying on the carpet. This was long before digital imaging was a thing. So what we can see in the tagging module is both nested versions of the keywords and unnested versions of the keywords. Now, originally I thought, oh, Darktable is taking the nested versions and putting them in unnested as well. But in actual fact, it's not, because Australia and New South Wales only appeared in the nested version of the tags. If you look in those original unnested tags, I did not have Australia, I did not have New South Wales. So Darktable is reading all of those tags as they appeared in the Lightroom version of the sidecar file and reading it exactly as it should be. Sure, it's a little bit redundant. You do end up with some duplication of data in the sense that I have a tag for Bruce 21 because it was my 21st birthday, as well as event birthday Bruce 21. But I figure that the devs, when they were writing the program, figured as well, better to have duplicate data than to miss data altogether. So I'm guessing that that's why it does it that way. Should it offer you the option to simply import nested tags and not unnested tags? Maybe, maybe not, I don't know. So how do we go about adding new tags to an image? Well, we can press Control T and that will give us this little text entry box down at the bottom of the screen. And if you wanna add a tag that you've never used before, let's say I wanted to add bolo tie. <laughs> I could type in bolo tie, click enter, and that has now entered that as a keyword into this image. Now, another way of doing that, I could type in the word napkin, which currently does not exist anywhere in my Darktable database. And I can click on new and that will create a new tag with that name. And it has assigned it to this image as well. Now, if I decide that I don't want that keyword to be attached to this image, I simply left click once on the keyword and click detach. And that will remove that keyword from this image. It will still appear in the database of keywords which have been used at some point, but it's no longer attached to that image. So if I type in napkin, we can see it's come back in the search results here as a keyword we've previously used. 
and if we then wanted to assign it to this image again we can just double click on it and it's attached or we could have clicked on the attach button. We can export all of the tags we've ever used whether they are currently in use or not to a Lightroom compatible keyword file simply with the export button here. So if we click on export we can then well, I'm looking at my desktop. You know what, I'll just leave that default file name. Export, let's minimize this and let's have a look at this file. So that is a list of all the keywords that I've ever used in Darktable and Lightroom. You'll also see that there's an import button here which will allow us to import tags from a keyword file that's been exported from Lightroom. Now, I'm not entirely sure why you would want to import stuff like that because you'd be bringing in keywords but they wouldn't actually be associated with any files. Perhaps if you were using something like scientific names for animals where you're using all of the various levels of families you know, in the scientific naming convention, I don't know much about that stuff, but maybe it's conceivable you would have quite an extensive collection of names already created, and rather than having to type them all in again, you might just want to import them into Darktable, and then you would be able to use the very last portion of that naming structure to create a whole nested keyword tag for an image. As an example, if I was to take that Australia New South Wales Tweed Heads tag and detach that from this image, if I wanted to reattach it, I would only have to type in Tweed, I get Tweed Heads, and then I get everything that Darktable associates with Tweed Heads. Australia New South Wales Tweed Heads as a nested tag, Tweed Heads as an individual tag, Australia, New South Wales, Tweed Heads, Twin Town Services Club, which is where this particular party took place. Now, I might prefer to assign that nested keyword structure instead of what was originally there, which it just finished at Tweed Heads. So I can simply select that once, click Attach, and it's now attached. So that's it for the tagging module. Talk to you soon.